Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the Serie A review for the week. A quick caution ahead. Uh, I will start the video with a probably a lengthy rant about Milan and how incensed I am over what was, has been happening. And if this is not your cup of tea, although the thumbnail clearly showed how abysmal Milan at the moment is and this will be a major talking point, you can use the timestamps below to go to my actual review of the match day because there were some nice things happening as well, Something, some things that are really really exciting. However, as a Milan fan I just need to get a few things off my chest. And it is good that there was a Monday night game because uh, it actually let me a little bit assess the situation, not get out of the pure emotional stuff. And yes, uh, the first gut feeling is, and I think for most of the fan about Pioli needs to go. Which on one side I find a little bit unfair. After all, he managed, uh, he did the impossible that with a Milan squad that was not that most talented in uh, the league, he won the Scudetto and every Milan fan will know this. He also, uh, it has, has, has been said that, you know, while even I was hoping that uh, building on the Scudetto, maybe you can build now something. Maybe we could be the next dynasty because there's a young core that we could build together. Maybe there's something ha 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 happening. The summer transfer window didn't uh, go as planned and there more a little bit on that as well. Um, however, there are good pieces there. No, it's not happening. And Pioli does have some fault in that. Pioli has the fault of being too stubborn and being too wedded to a system which is so anti where he was, honestly. Because this guy came in as a plug and play coach. He can play any system. He can stabilize uh, things. He can work with youngsters as he has shown at Fiorentina and some other teams. So Milan was the perfect playing ground for him. And it actually worked for the last two and a half years remarkably well. Almost three years now. Well, remarkably well. He has done an excellent job. However, he was already out coached in the Champions League uh, against the Chelsea team. Honestly, uh, not Chelsea has the better squad. There's no question about it. But Chelsea was in serious trouble at that point. They completely wiped the floor with Milan in two matches. This was kind of the first warning sign. Oh, yeah, that it might not work all that well, although you didn't see it coming. You also saw a few wobbles because, you know, the last time Milan kept a clean sheet is, yeah, uh, back in the... Old year, way before the World Cup. I think it was against the nil-nil against Cremonese, which was also not that much of a highlight game. That you see the problems, and especially over the past two to three weeks, the, the problems were clear as daylight. And you're sticking with the same system, largely sticking with the same players, don't doing anything that is on Pioli. And... I was not unhappy when he got renewed, but I also felt it's a little bit unnecessary because, you know, you got the Scudetto, you had two seasons of good success. Maybe you, just if for the growth, maybe you want to wait until maybe the season, then one can renew a contract. It's the only contract renewal that Milan gets done because, I mean, the fish starts to stink from the top. And I think the major point is, it's not even the leadership up there, although they will also get that. What really, really, really annoys me is two years ago, I was saying, yeah, injuries, it's too bad, it's too bad, we have so, so, so many injuries. Then last season, injuries, injuries. What's now? Injuries, 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 injuries. The medical stuff needs to go. It cannot be that you assemble a squad and you carry injury after injury after injury. Once is maybe bad luck. But three seasons in a row, major in, in, in injury crisis, that's not bad luck anymore. This is a poor medical staff and it flies so against the face of a Milan has been. Because Milan had a uh, favor for a Milan lab and that they could detect every, everything in the nights. They were revolutionary ahead. They could extend players' career beyond the normal time. Now they are probably one of the worst in all of Italy at a big club like, like Milan and that is something that really 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 bugs me and this needs to be addressed as quickly as possible the whole medical staff needs to be exchanged and there needs to be some investment done 
because it cannot be that for the third season in a row, yes, in one you won the Scudetto, in one you finished second, but it cannot be that all the players that you invested in remain injured. And I understand that you maybe buy even players because uh, Milan is not a super rich club as much as the fan base would like it to be uh, seen as the major player that uh, they have been in Europe and probably the, uh, the name carries a whole lot more. They need to buy players that are maybe a little bit injury prone, maybe a little bit too young uh, still, or maybe a little bit too old. And then have some squad players in a good uh, uh, age. Maybe you also need players like Tonali and Calabria who have been Milan fans all their life, who want to do nothing more than play for the, for this club. Uh, although, especially in Calabria's case, they are not up to snuff. Uh, at the very, very top level. However, they're always going to give you spirited performance. I am also reminded of Patrick Cutrone, who I liked a whole lot, but, you know, he was very limited in, in, in a way. So those are realities. But uh, the medical stuff, that needs to be top-notch. That absolutely needs to be top-notch. And what even annoys me more is that, you know, uh, Inter had a great medical stuff. They fired them all. That's the one that you hire right there and then. And get rid of your uh, crooked staff that, that you have. This is the one problem that annoys me the most. The second problem, and we are not going in the team, I'm really starting from the top. The second problem is um, after the Scudetto, there was a change in ownership. What a rotten time to have that. This is a squad that was overperforming, performing really well had clean sheet after clean sheet, the way that they finished the season was uh, was an absolute miracle line. Uh, run Milan fans in dreamland. Absolutely. And it was solid. It was solid even in the early stages of the season. Also has, has been said, it was not a bad season so far. Although, uh, you know, Scudetto, no, but you know, it was not a bad season because we were not, uh, Milan were not so far off to what they have been last year. But however, what really annoys me is that because of this ownership transfer, uh, suddenly the whole uh, Mercato structure went out of, out of the way. You missed out on Botman, which you really needed. But the, the, the deal was not done yet and no one wants to sell. So this is one thing. Then you got the Catalare, which I was very excited. I still think that the Catalare... Give that guy a little bit, a little bit of patience. He just came in. He didn't even have a full preseason. Everything, new city, he's young. We saw in the first few games and here and there we see really that this guy has supreme talent. Give this guy a break. And also for Pioli, please play him in a position that he likes for crying out loud. But that was the king signing. Putting it all on a 20-year-old, 19-year-old, it's not gonna fly. It really is not gonna fly. This is what annoys me. And uh, so you and you're linked with players left and right, like Zaniolo now. I mean, I actually I like Sanz as Zaniolo, but he's also way past his prime, clearly. But will he help us? And then you say this Mercato, we're not doing anything. We're signing a goal goalkeeper. There's Tata Rojano, who's playing awfully and he's he's on the field probably the uh the linchpin for the bad performances that have been happening it all starts with the goalkeeper let one of the others play for crying out loud don't stay do the same thing all over, over again and then what really 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 annoys me that's the one thing i love maldini he should be always at the club but not getting renewals done I'm so tired of all that. I mean, meanwhile, every player that comes, I mean, no, yeah, we let our contract run, contract run down, uh, and then we have a free, and we can go wherever we want, and it may not work out. Look at Kess here, for instance. Oh, Donnarumma also was not all happy. Now we have the Leao saga that seemingly seems to be done, seemingly like Kess here. No, it's not, no, no, not going to get done. Even the renewal of Maldini and, Mas uh, and, and Masara took forever. Those are things I absolutely cannot understand and I cannot allow in a Milan team. This is unprofessional to the nth degree. And now we have to start also at the team and what's wrong with, with the team. And as I said, it starts with the 
injury to Mike Menia. Mike Menia is a very modern, proactive goalkeeper. Yes, great shot stops, stops, stops abilities, but while he has is also mobility, he can launch attacks. He is the first attacker. He also intercepts. He's a very mobile goalkeeper. Now we basically have a 1980s style goalkeeper back there that moves slowly and has no command of the area and in addition has no command over the defenders. It all starts there. That Tomori and Kalulu are not at the high level that they have been before. That another center back was sorely needed that unfortunately Simon Kier is not up to snuff anymore because injury is caught up with him that's all so we need to get a defender however everyone knows we need to get a defender so you have to have to, have to pay a peer premium for him you had Botman signed and that's the other thing we have a good scouting department but we don't sign anyone the players that they identify they are all great players now. Julian Alvarez, Enzo Fernandez, uh, Sven Botman you know all great players why can't we sign them? Okay, I'm getting off the track. So the defense need to, need, need, needs to be a little bit more organized and needs to actually has no confidence in uh, the shot, stop, uh, shot stopping qualities of the goalkeeper at the back. In addition, we have uh, Theo Hernandez who has become defensive very reliably because all he wants to do is press forward and since the World Cup he, he's overplayed. He's definitely overplayed. We have Kessie. No real replacement has been bought, brought in for Kessie. And while he didn't have a great season, he was the one uh, type of midfielder. We have Tonali. We have uh, Benazer, who is re both are really, really good. But Kessie added this extra sauce. And honestly, yes, you might be annoyed at him not getting any, uh, the way he left. But he wants back to Milan. Take him. Don't let him go to Inter for crying out loud. And then up front, yes, it's, it's an entire mess. I mean, why Origi, blah, blah, blah. There are so many troubles. And what really annoys me, why, why, where my alarm bars are going on. 18 goals conceded this year. That never has happened. The, th um, the defeats that we have, and especially the number of goals conceded, that never has happened in Milan's his history. I'm going to show you a graph here of how the, ra the rating has developed so far over the season and, and, and the expected points. And you see suddenly the drop boom, at the end. This is really, really worrisome. Some, I'm not for sh I'm really, I like it stable. I like it steady when I run a club. I like stability. But there is a problem that needs to be addressed and there needs to be some help. I'm not necessarily saying fire Pioli right now. But he needs to be put a whole lot under pressure. Top four is a must. Is an absolute must. And the way this is going, I mean, it seems like a secure top four finish. At the moment, even with Juventus having gone away, completely gone, 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 gone away, it's way too cozy up there. There are many teams around that could actually pip you. And the last thing that I do not un un understand, you had actually a relatively good performance at Salernitana to start the year. You had a really good performance against the Roma that you threw away in the last 10 minutes. Can happen. But what happened from there is just beyond. And with that, let's look at what has happening in Serie A. Okay. Here are the results from Serie A from last weekend. Uh, I go through a few remarkable ones. I mean, Inter winning at Cremonese despite being 1-0 down is all down to Lautaro Martinez. Inter also looked looking good, but as we'll see, the derby is coming. I didn't mention it in my rant before. And Inter looks so much in better shape, although they're not good at all. And that's a little uh, shame right there. Didn't see much of the game, to be honest. They get the win that Milan could not get a Cremonese. That's all I want to say uh, there. Uh, it's also almost a certain thing that Lukman is scoring for Atalanta. Uh, Mele giving them lead of Sampdoria. It's really looks look, not look, looking good for Sampdoria at this moment. Uh, I, I alluded to it in last um, week's video that, you know, uh, we all the talk is about Juventus, but the financial crisis and uh, all the leadership crisis that Sampdoria is in, there is more and it actually could result in the relegation further down than Serie B. They could really get down. And just for the beautiful jerseys and the fact that this is one of the, uh, 
to me, this is one of these Serie A clubs. Yes, they have been in Serie B over the past uh, decades and, and, and so on. But this is one of the teams that just should be there. Makes me really, really, really sad. Um, I've said enough about Milan. The only thing I want to say is that A, they ruined again a uh, lunchtime kickoff for me. That I don't know how this would have gone if Giroud's goal uh, would have counted. And yes, I thought when Giroud actually got the one to, there will be a fight back. But the coach Genesi said it, it was rather easy. We just waited, put some men between the line and waited for a counter-attack. That's all they needed to do. They scored five goals from seven shots. Horrific. Absolutely horrific. The one thing is though, Origi's goal, that was a screamer that, uh, yeah, watch that one. Uh, <laughs> I cannot even be happy about Juve losing again to Monza. Uh, Monza completely wiped the floor with Juve in the first they have took a totally deserved uh, Tony lead through Churia and uh, Dani Motta. Uh, even had a uh, goal did it's allowed, it should have been three at the half. Honestly not, because of this allowed, I'll go by the way that Monza played a whole lot better than Juve ever did. There was nothing, not coming, much coming back. The one thing is though, which is back for Juve, maybe there is something, but uh, it, Juve, Talked last we last week about you were there also in quite some trouble and there's some weird boycotts by you fans blah 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 it's never boring around you either uh lazio after a great performance again against milan although now we know it is because milan are bad not because lazio are that good no lazio i i a decent team but fiorentina should should have won the game uh the goal the go ahead goal to through casale was a brilliant goal <laughs> weirdly brilliant goal uh but fiorentina fell a little bit hard down by going one nil down to have nico gonzalez gives them an equalizer and then fiorentina had some really good chances and very late on milenkovic should have won it uh this was fiorentina's loss and again fiorentina showing up in a rather odd jersey in the olympico why purple doesn't work We'll never know. Napoli against Roma was a highly entertaining, wonderful match. Yes, I was distracted because there was the NFC Championship game in the NFL going on as well. But what I could say, I mean, first half it was more or less all Napoli and the goal that Osiman scored um, it was the second best of, of the weekend. Ah, uh, what a bomb he put in there. Uh, Napoli looking there irresistible selves however Roma managed to get back into the game and when El Sharavi got the equals it was deserved it was a really entertaining game up and down and then getting the goal through Simeone the winning goal uh you know ignited the entire uh, Maradona stadium it's a, it was truly a sight to behold what was happening there Napoli so much on course for their third Scudetto uh, that no one at this moment is really doubting again, and although there are many, many games to, to, to play. They are the class of the league. Uh, and yeah, we hear also some rumblings that uh, Mourinho is a little bit frustrated with Roma and might actually go back to Chelsea. Let's see about that. <laughs> I had that. Sounds, that, that sounds great. I think it was also linked with some national team jobs like Brazil. Yeah. Let's see all about that. Uh, and of course, there's the Zaniolo situation as well, who wanted to leave. He didn't want to go to Bournemouth. Uh, and now he's basically locked out, which for a player that you have to thank, you know, a, a very a well-liked player overall, does, does look good. But again, at least the performances for Roma are showing up, but it was not enough against this Napoli. Napoli are a class of their own at the moment and it's very very exciting to be honest uh the match they ended with a one one between uh, udine and Elas verona allowing actually Elas verona to a little bit a little bit taste maybe the sweet taste of surviving but they had an up and down start to this uh to the to this one here so let's see where this will go uh in the standings napoli 13 points ahead head head finta milan plunging all the way to fifth from second yes it's the first round of the 
return fixtures and and so on we see that uh champ champ champs the qualification got now a whole lot, lot tighter because you saw the dip for milan uh it's now napoli and inter and then it's a four-way race and it's really really tight between lazio atalanta milan and roma i would say one lombard team and one roma team makes it in let's see about that on the bottom it's also getting a little bit tighter and suddenly it's Spezia who are actually also a favorite to go down ahead of Elas Verona Salentano also not looking safe and look at where you are in 23 points also not looking good Monza though uh, have relieved himself of any potential relegation trouble that much is already for sure. Uh, it just one fun thing because I'm ranting against Milan still slightly ahead of schedule where they should be, but it's, it's horrible. And the Uzbekistan's basically say Milan are now only in fourth place. They were at the beginning of the year a relatively secure, tight with Inter, but you know, just ahead, making it into the Champions League. Now it's all open. Uh, Inter looking now very much set and. Can talk about like we have the derby coming up on sunday evening i've the milan derby is one of my favorite games ever it's the one where i get emotional i sometimes have not really looked forward to it because of forms but i always watched it i may not watch this one it might be too painful because i with the form that milan are going one against Torino are conceded, two against Lecce conceded, three against Inter in the Super Cup, four against Lazio, five against Sassuolo. No, it doesn't necessarily continue like that, but I think a 6 1 for Inter is very much in the cards. It's very much in the cards. I think the only thing that Milan could do, and I don't think they can do, is to just hunker down and make a 10 man wall ahead of Tata Rujano and hope you're there. But Inzaghi is gonna hold back and uh see how you know let milan come and hit them on the counter again watch my words there the one thing about the scheduling is why do we have the derby so early in february again uh i think the derby should be much played much later in the season that but that's a personal uh, i just i just don't see the reason to have the derby as the second fixture of the return legs in a way that to me doesn't make much sense i mean the only thing is that yes it's ahead of the champions league so kind of a little bit of precursor no but i think this should be played later this is a fixture that should come late march early april my personal opinion so i have to, i have to really question the scheduling there as well uh as for other fixtures i think sassuolo atalanta um could be an interesting one of uh, um, let, let's see if sassuolo can actually get get something and also fiorentina bologna there's no love lost between those two either and can you do something at salernitana we shall see i also give you on the other side the fixtures after I'm planning to do a video, but I'm not sure uh, if I will have the strength to have UV against Fiorentina. That's probably the standout fixture there. Although uh, for Champions League qualification, Lazio against Atalanta is way more interesting. Milan having to play Torino ahead of their clash with Spurs. So there's a little bit there. But before, ahead of all of that, we have, of course, Coppa Italia action happening midweek. First game already on Tuesday evening, Inter against Atalanta. I think that's an interesting one although uh inter always seem to beat up the lockdown so yeah sorry for the rant but it was really needed it was a little bit therapy session for me as well but i need more uh for that i need change that's what i can say i need some change and it doesn't have to be a coach can change i need some change i need lineup changes i need today is the last day in the mercato i need a, a few new players will not happen I need change. That's all. In any case, please give a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.